Inject me with another episode of Silo. We are more than halfway there to the ending with three episodes to go and I'm still scratching my head at what exactly is going on. In this video we take a look at the show's biggest mysteries, clues, and theories and don't worry if you haven't read the book, I haven't either, this is a non-spoiler review. As always I've left timestamps below so you can see all the topics I'll be covering. Now put on your suits, it's time to clean. We begin on the beaches of Georgia, or should I say a hallucination of them. These are images directly from the Amazing Adventures in Georgia book complete with the Nautilus shell, one found in the book and also tattooed on George. Gloria Hildebrandt, George's aunt, hallucinates a life by the ocean with the husband and daughter, but just like the ocean is a figment of her imagination, so too is her daughter. Gloria never had kids. As we'll learn throughout the episode, she, like Allison, were tricked into believing they were infertile with Juliet's father, Dr. Nichols complicit in the cover-up. Dr. Nichols never removed Gloria's birth control. This was a part of some grander plan to keep those silo-goers who asked too many questions from procreating, and Dr. Nichols never questioned this because he knows what happens to those who ask too many questions. If the silo is some sort of experiment, perhaps this idea of obedience is at its core. Is it all some test to create the most obedient humans, a test that will take years to weed out the ones that ask too many questions. This is also where we're introduced to the Flame Keepers, a group of individuals intent on preserving the memories and history of the pre-Silo world. According to Gloria, she is the last Flame Keeper left, passing the baton off to Juliet. She even hints that Juliet's mother, Hannah, was close to the Flame Keepers, but not necessarily one of them. Hannah worked with Anne, George's mother, in creating a magnifying device. We learned from Martha about this device a few episodes ago, and that it was ultimately retrieved by Judicial for violating the Pact's rule of no magnification beyond a certain power. Glorious hallucinations are not brought upon by dementia, as Nurse Amy describes, but by her being drugged up on lorazepam. Someone is wanting to keep her drugged and thus not a problem. With Sims and the Watchers keeping tabs on her, they are likely the culprits. The episode also gives us some more names inside the front cover of the book, which may or may not be past flame keepers. There's Blau T, Emilio C, OBIJ, and Melody, but it's rather odd as some of the letters are capitalized some are not, and some are written in cursive. It kind of reminds me of the word truth engraved on Holston's badge, and for some reason the T and the H are capitalized here. Well, our poor guy Lucas tries making a move on Juliet and is shut down. Denied. I wouldn't put him in the friend zone just yet. I mean, Juliet has a lot going on, and she just found out that the love of her life was using her, so she probably has a lot of feelings going on. Now, there are a few interesting bits of information here. First, Juliet connects the lights in the sky with being stars, as evidenced with that page in her book. Perhaps by knowing the placement of these constellations, they can determine where they are on Earth. There's also mention of a comet or shooting star, which may help them figure out when they are. For example, Halley's Comet appears every 76 years. If they know what Lucas saw, they could infer what year it is. We also learn that Lucas is a systems analyst that works in IT. That could definitely come in handy, especially considering the discovery of the hard drive at the end of the episode. I think we'll see Lucas and Juliet working together. And just a reminder, if you like these types of videos, take a moment to like and subscribe, it really helps the channel out. Bernard's becoming more and more of an ally for Juliet, but I'm still wary of his intentions. He'll tell Juliet that Judge Meadows threatened to remove him after he sided with Juliet last episode on the George investigation. Mayor Bernard thinks that Meadows is making a move to hijack the silos servers. As as a former head of IT, he knows just how important those servers are. They control everything from the ventilation, crops, and messages. So he wants to work with Juliet to keep Meadows at bay. But something seems very off with the judge. Last episode, we saw how she was under the weather, and now she's off work due to a quote-unquote cold. Juliet believes Meadows is purposely holding Gloria against her will. But when she mentions Gloria, Meadows at first doesn't even know who she is. I think that's because Meadows is mere 
merely a puppet doing the bidding of a higher power. When Juliet makes an offer to give up being sheriff in exchange for a few hours with Gloria, the judge says it's not possible, but never explains why, just stating that, quote, they'll never let you. Who are these people? It's either Sims or some other power. Then there's also the question of Meadows' sickness, which Juliet says is, quote, just as real as Gloria's dimension. What did she mean by this? Does Meadows have something more than a cold? She kind of moves this white bottle when Juliet arrives. Is that alcohol? After all, Juliet tells her to, quote, keep drinking her cold medicine. I just found it rather odd. Regardless, it seems as though Meadows is merely a puppet doing what Sims wants in exchange for this fancy apartment and to keep some relics. We get confirmation that Sims is the boss of not just two of these watchers, but several. They keep constant surveillance over the silo through various cameras embedded into mirrors. Holston somehow knew about this, hence why he left flowers in front of Juliet's mirrors, the vase of which is conveniently destroyed by maintenance in order to allow them a better view of her apartment. But we also also learn that Holston placed flowers in Gloria's room too. It's almost as though Juliet is following Holston's breadcrumbs, but the question remains whether or not this will end up with her cleaning as well. This episode also gives us more insight into the relationship between Juliet and her father. He's quite excited when she arrives on his doorstep stating that he's waited a long time to tell her something. He actually never gets a chance to tell her what this is, but it's safe to say it involves something to do with her mother. At the end of the episode, we learn that Hannah, Juliet's mother, killed herself, and I can't help but think Juliet believes her father was somehow responsible. After all, he has a history of not coming through, and Juliet implies he somehow betrayed Hannah. We also get some more info as to what happened to Juliet's brother Jacob in episode 4. When Gloria experiences a seizure, Dr. Nichols tells Juliet, quote, you know what to do, suggesting she had been through this before with Jacob. Did Jacob eventually succumb to these seizures, and is that part of of why Hannah killed herself. And finally, we're reintroduced to George's hard drive, which Holston took all the way back in episode two. Just as he stashed documents in his apartment vent, so too does he stash the hard drive in a vent. And now we get into our trailer sleuthing segment where we take a look at the trailers to see if we can uncover any new clues. Just a reminder, we won't be covering every clip, just the ones that pertain to new information we received this episode. Well, it looks as though Bernard is brought into the janitor's closet, which really puts a question mark on whose side he's really on. Later, we'll see him in a cornfield telling what might be Juliet that the clock is running, there isn't much time left before she gets tackled by one of those SWAT members. So I'm curious as to which side Bernard is really on. Here we have Juliet hiding in a hospital-like setting which may be her escape from the long-term care facility. Since next episode is titled Hannah, after Juliet's mother, it looks as though we'll be getting to see that magnifying device she created alongside George's mother mother, Anne. Not sure what this device is, but it has the number 18 on it, which was the same number found on the hard drive in episode 1. Juliet's here, perhaps at Lucas's IT desk, hooking the hard drive up to a computer. Now it's time I turn it over to you. What do you think will happen next? I want to hear in the comments below. Thanks for watching, please make sure to like and subscribe, and for more bad takes you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember... Last flame people.